Okay guys, real quick, give you all an update on the Kratky beds. I always promise you I do a, I do this in 15 day intervals. Uh, I think I'm running about a day behind right here, so I mean we, we'll call this 16 days. But anyway, um, we'll call this actually 31 days. <laughs> but anyway, uh, here's the results here after the 30 days in the Kratky beds. As y'all can see, everything is loving its environment. All the lettuces. Uh, these right here in the front are supposed to head. I guess we will see what they do in the future. But uh, as you can see, these are doing really good. And uh, my kale last time I in these beds got off to a slow start, but this stuff here is uh, looking just fine. So well, this is uh, this is just the regular dwarf blue curl kale like uh, similar to what I grew in the last bed and then the uh, the broccoli leaf kale uh, this stuff here is uh, is really big I'm not sure uh, how big it's going to get I've never grown this before but uh, it's really looking like something so <laughs> we'll see how it does too see if I have to get a new greenhouse to transplant them in <laughs> and then the uh, the beans as you can see, we are loaded up. We got beans everywhere. I mean, these things are are doing really, really good. Look at all those beans. And uh, this is just this is just a start right here. The Italian beans haven't even started producing yet. These are these are the providers right here that are got all these beans on them. But the Italians are just now starting to bloom. So uh, I don't have any shot of the Italian beans right now, but. Anyway, we'll check up on them again later. But uh, one other thing I wanted to show y'all, I'm not here to do actually, uh, you know, beat the dead horse here and keep, you know, showing the same stuff over and over and over again. But I want to show you this double bloom tomato right here. Uh, that thing is huge. So we may have to do another tomato weigh in on that. But anyway, uh, let's get on with the with the matter at hand and. Uh, talk about that a little bit okay guys uh, what I figured I'd do today is um, kind of discuss pest control in the greenhouse and uh, I'm gonna go over with you a few things that I use and uh, I've had good success with uh, like I said there's many many different items out there on the market today I know with a lot of you guys um, particularly as uh, organic is very important and, um, and I can definitely understand that uh, and I'm going to kind of give you an idea of some of these products that uh, that are Omri, um, should I say Omri um, listed, which is the Organic Material Review Institute. Uh, you can go into their website at uh, at uh, www.omri.org, and uh, you can see a list of, of several materials in there, you know, including pesticides. Uh, garden soils, uh, additives, different things like that that you can find in our information if it is OMRI listed. Of course, I mean it should have, um, if it is OMRI listed, it should have a label on it that says it is. Um, I don't know if you guys can see this on this bottle, this jar right here, but you see the OMRI right there. The logo on there that says OMRI listed. And, um, that's one of the products right there, which is the Monterey Garden Insect Spray Spinosad. Um, another one I use here. Uh, this one is not on the Omri list. This is just the uh, Pyrethrum Spray. Uh, stuff works very good. Uh, they, they do have some Pyrethrins listed in the Omri website. Uh, this particular one is not listed on there. Um, Azamax is Omri listed as well. Little model there. Uh, now that is what the, what this is is actually um, it's an anti-feedant type pest control where the uh, insects will not eat once this has been applied to them. Uh, it works. It works real good as well. Um, then we have a pyrethrum total release 
fogger. Now this this right here, you would uh, actually would you have to kind of have a a good balance step. You have to pick a pick a temperature um, when the night is uh, is not going to be it's not going to be cold enough where you're going to need heat. And then of course you don't want to do it in the daytime. You don't want to apply any of this stuff, you know, in, in the heat of the day. You want to do it in the early morning or late in the evening. But this one right here is good to do overnight, so that um, let y'all get a shot of that right there, so that y'all can um, you don't have to be bothered with it. I mean, you know, you don't want you, actually you, you don't want to be in here with this thing running. Um, although it's you know it, it's not gonna it's not like a big poison or anything like that. I mean, you know, pyrethrum is made from chrysanthemum plants, so I mean, you know, it's uh, it's not gonna hurt you and. You know, but uh, you want to pick a night when it's you know temperature is level. You're not going to need any heat. You're not going to need any air. Um, that way, you can shut the greenhouse down, shut off all the blowers, shut off all the fans. Um, you don't even want your inflation fan running. You know, you know, you don't want the heat to come on. You don't want nothing. You want this thing to stay fogged as long as possible. Um, and works real good. I've I've done it a time or two last year. I have not used one this year. But uh, I did use it last year, and it did real good. So, um, <clears throat> and then of course you've got your sticky white fly traps, aphid traps. Um, these right here, you just pull them apart and uh, flip them over the other way. Hang a hook on them, hang them on a string. Um, I found those right there to be about the best ones. Uh, I bought some. At a bargain one time, and the uh, <laughs> they came. You know, I got a lot of them, like a hundred for you know, you know, next to nothing. But they, the things didn't. I mean, they weren't sticky at all. So I wound up having to buy, um, you know, cans of, of uh, sticky trap stuff, or you know, you could use uh, uh, various different items. A uh, tangle foot, you can, you can use that if you want to on them, but. It's the fact of having to take them out of the box and they're supposed to be ready to use them. They peel off papers on them. Nah, it, it, the things wasn't even sticky enough. I mean, the fly, white flies would land on them and you know jump right back off. So that ain't no good. You know, you know once they get on there, you want them to stay on there. So um, just something keep that in mind. You know, when I, when you're shopping for sticky traps in particular, you know, and I'll spend a little bit more and then and, and get some that got some sticky on. Them. So um, you know, just keep that in mind. Um, and one other, I'm going to give you a, a recipe for one that I do, uh, it's a homemade remedy. And you just take a 32 ounce bottle, like this right here, it's a plain old spray bottle, you can get them at the dollar store, Walmart, anywhere like that, you know, uh, it's a plain old spray bottle, you've all seen them, you all have them. Um, and you want to take them, you want to put you 23 ounces of water in there. And then you want to mix nine ounces of rubbing alcohol and one teaspoon of dish soap. Now your rubbing alcohol, if it's uh, just if you keep it around 50, 70 percent, something like that, then you know that's uh, you'll stay with that ratio around around nine ounces. Uh, if you go, if you got something stronger laying around, you know you might want to cut that back to you know maybe seven ounces or something like that. Uh, I mean I would anyway, but uh, and shake it up real good. And apply it to your to underside the leaves of your plants, and then the, that's true with any of this stuff. You know, you want to you want to make sure that uh, you know you, you're getting undersized those leaves because that is where them bugs love to hide, and they will hide from you. And particularly when you're using the uh, like the home remedy here with the alcohol and the and the uh, dish soap and stuff like that, you definitely want to uh, try to get actually spray the insects themselves um, because that's that's how they get rid of them. I mean, this is just not going to put some kind of film on the plant, you know, and all this, you know, that's going to deter the insects. You want to actually get it on the insect itself in order to dry it up. I mean, soft bodied insects like aphids and white flies, um, you know, you want to dry them up. And that's what, in essence, what that stuff does. Uh, just, it just dries out their, their body, you know, they just don't, they don't have anything left. Um, and it works really good. But uh, try to get it on the insect if you can. Um, Spray the underside of each leaf of every plant as good as you can. You know, maybe start on one end, work your way down because of, <coughs> excuse me, those white flies are sneaky. They will, uh, 
they'll try to fly off while you're spraying and they'll go to another plant you know and also um, and then you want to repeat this process you know again after after about three to five days um, that that's the same true with any of this stuff um, three to five days retreat especially <coughs> excuse me especially for um, insects like white flies because that, that is uh, their lifespan uh, life cycle is usually uh, five days so you know if, you, uh, if the eggs hatch and if you, if you get rid of the ones you know in five days that were alive and then you know then the eggs hatch in the meantime then you got another round to deal with so you know you have to make sure that you go back and follow up on it and keep you know keep it under control because those white flies are the biggest pest that I have ever had to deal with in my life um, aphids, you can get rid of them pretty easy. They don't run around on you like white flies do. Um, you can you pretty much get them, and that stuff right there works wonders for the aphids. I mean, it'll knock them right out. And it works good with white flies. Like I say, you just gotta, they're sneaky. You just gotta work with them a little bit. But uh, you can get them under control between that and maybe that and a combination of the sticky cards and such as that. Um, so that pretty well covers any of that on there, that I'm, that any of this stuff that I use right there. Uh, all of it, like I say, I, you know, I, I would all, even though they're not all listed organic, I would consider them organic. Um, you know, anything that doesn't have, actually have a poison in it, like a seven or liquid seven, or you know, a lot of these other insecticides that you would use, uh, which I would not use in a greenhouse. I would use, I would use nothing like that in a greenhouse. Uh, I don't even use them outside of my raised bed garden. I mean, I try to use something that is safe, and uh, I don't want to kill the beneficial insects as well as. Uh, you know, while I'm trying to get rid of the bad insects. So, uh, you just kind of, you know, just, just weigh out your odds and see what you want to do, you know. So, and like I said, I'm just giving you this information, you know, hopefully it'll help you out, and, you know, and you can make your own decisions based on that. A lot more, I don't know, market that, you know, other than this stuff right here, but uh, you know, just, I'm just showing you what I use. Um, and then, uh, okay, we're going to cover something else here too, the, uh, uh, I know a lot of you guys have greenhouses. You have uh, roll-up curtains on the side. Um, I chose not to do the roll-up curtains. <clears throat> uh, the roll-up curtains have pros and cons on those. You know, in my opinion, I mean, they're, 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 it's a wonderful idea if you want to, you know, you want to ventilate your greenhouse really good, and plus you want to let beneficial insects into your greenhouse, such as bees for pollination, uh, ladybugs, and that type of thing. Um, it's a good idea, but at the same time, you know, you gotta, you have the, the bad insects that enter as well, like the white flies and the aphids and the fungus gnats and just different things like that that will, you know, come in and and then you got to keep them under control as well. Um, uh, but I chose not to go that route because I I've, I've got my greenhouse set. It's not, you know, my greenhouse is not real large. It's 14 by 20, and uh, you know, and all, and I can keep it uh, pretty well under control in here as far as the the heating and the ventilation and the uh, cooling of it so uh, I chose not to go that route and I try to keep it sealed up as a matter of fact uh, I'm going to show you guys the uh, uh, screen mesh that I actually ordered as insect mesh for greenhouses that I ordered and uh, put it on my uh, screen windows and my uh, screen over my louvers as well so let me show you that Okay guys, so what I've done here is installed a insect screen mesh in place of the original screen material that was inside the window frames. Uh, this stuff is supposed to go down to as far as small insect as thrips, uh, which is a thrip is <laughs> a pretty small insect. So uh, this should keep the white flies and the aphids and various other critters out. Uh, and I've also at the same time, I put that in the screen over the louvers right there as you can see and uh, that right there will definitely help uh, you know you're not going to keep all the insects out anyway but uh, this will definitely help especially if you don't use roll up side curtains okay so y'all can see what the deal is right there I mean you know that that, uh, that stuff right there will you know it, it'll keep most insects tiny insects out as well um, you know it's not you're not going to keep all the bugs out of the, out of the greenhouse, you know, period. It's about impossible because you got to open the door. you got to be able to come in here, and you got to be able to go out of here. So, 
Um, you know, and especially when you got a big 4,000 CFM fan up over the door like I do, and it's pulling really hard. And as soon as you crack that door open, I mean, it's like a rush of air comes in that door, um, and, and it will pull any lurking insects that are they're hanging out by the door, just you know, standing in the shadows, waiting to get in there and attack your greenhouse, and then that's it. They're gonna go right in there, and if they, hopefully, you know, some of them will turn right around and get sucked right back out by the fan, but. That don't always happen. Uh, the next thing you know, they'll be flying around in here. I mean, I've, I've seen some ladybugs, and uh, of course, I saw a ladybug in here this morning. Was you know, and I'm like, yeah, I'll, well, I'll take you if you can find anything to eat in here, because I about killed everything. Um, <laughs> but uh, anyway, that's just an example right there, and you know that that ladybug did not come through that screen right there or through that louver. I mean, you know, it, it, she did not. Uh, we've got, I've gotten flies in here before. I mean, I've got I've had wasps fly in. Uh, you know, just just from the just a few seconds that door's open. So, uh, like I say, it, it, nothing's 100% foolproof. I mean, you know, unless you unless you build a tunnel up to your greenhouse and put you know put plastic flaps over like you like a walk-in cooler or something like that. You know, with a fly fan on it, it'd be about the only way you could you know pretty much keep everything out. But that's we all know that's not realistic. But uh, anyway. Um, I hope that was helpful to you, and um, like I said, just giving you some ideas about what I do. And um, you know, like I say I don't claim to be an expert on any of this stuff by any means. I mean, I've learned a lot from you know a lot of you guys out there on on YouTube, and um, and I, I intend to learn more. We never get too old to learn. And uh, like I say, I just I feel like if I can help somebody, you know, with my knowledge of what I know and what I've experienced, then you know, uh, that's that's a good thing in my book. But uh, anyway, guys. Um, I hope this has been helpful to you, and I hope you enjoyed the uh, the cracky bed update. And, uh, and that about pretty much about covers it. And, uh, you guys have a good one. May God bless you all, and uh, we'll see you next time.